Hey guys, I'm Nate Perkins and welcome to my In The Bag. First off, I want to give a big shout to all my sponsors, Whale Sacks, OTB Discs, Upper Park Disc Golf. I've been carrying the Rebel bag all season long. It's definitely my favorite bag that I've ever carried on tour. And lastly, to my manufacturer sponsor, Dismania Discs. This is my sixth season throwing Dismania plastic, and honestly, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be the player I am today. I wouldn't be living out of a van if it wasn't for their support. When Dismania launched the Night Strike in 2018, it set me on a different path in life altogether, and I can't thank them enough. All right, so we're gonna get right into the putters. I wanna talk to you guys a little bit why I just made the switch from the Link back to the P2. Latitude was able to produce the same tack and grip every time, and I was having trouble finding a P2 that would do the same. But now that Dismania has moved their production in-house, the new plastic that they produce with these prototype P2s is exactly what I've been looking for. It's got that little bit of kind of, I describe it as like a chalky grip. It's tacky, but it's not slippery. It's stiff, but it's not rock hard. So I'm super happy to be moving back to the P2. I feel like putting with the P2, it's beadless. It's a little bit straighter than the link and it's less of a math problem when I'm putting it. I just put it right on the line and I don't have to worry about it hyzering too much. I also still like to use the link for my little forehand throw-ins. From like 120 out, instead of going with the backhand, I like to kind of chip a soft forehand and hyzer at the pin. And of course, I've always got a fresh tactic in the bag for my straight to stable forehand approaches. gonna move on to the mid ranges and I'd like to ex <clears throat> please excuse me for my voice we went to summer camp music festival last weekend on our weekend off and it was pretty dusty and I'm still raspy from partying with Kev Jones James and Paige <clears throat> all right so we're gonna go from most understable to most stable for most understable this is probably my new favorite mid range from Dismania this is the origin Nice skinny profile. I like to use it for my hyzer flip stand up to straight and drift right shots. Then I'm throwing a Glow MD3. Thanks to Dana Vici for this sweet team stamp dyed one. This is just dead straight for me. Maybe a slight bit of drift. This run of Glow MD3 is nice and flat and that's really how I like my mids. All right, then we've got an old school C-Line MD3 with the mindful disc off yin and yang owls. This is straight to a little bit of fade. And then this is our brand new prototype MD3. Super visible red plastic. And honestly, what, what Kyle Klein and Eagle McMahon did at D-Glow by immediately bagging this brand new mold and throwing it and battling for the win out there, it just shows you how consistent the plastic is at Dismania's new factory. And honestly, this MD3 is the most impressive in my bag right now. It's got a ton of glide, but it doesn't want to get to the ground. It really doesn't want to fade at all. So it's just a little bit more stable than my other version of C-Line MD3. All right, moving into the fairways. Let's start with most understable to most stable. So the most understable fairway in my bag is the original Night Strike. This is the first one that UC gave to me way back in 2018. It's been in my bag ever since. Now it's just a Heiser Flip player's dream, mainly backhand with this one. 
This is a Night Strike 2. The Night Strike 2 is a little flatter than the original Night Strike. I like to use it for hyzer flip to straight shots, and I love this for my forehand ante lines. This is a fresh Night Strike 2. It's considerably more stable than my beat in Night Strike 2, and I like to use it for my backhand straight to stable fairway shots. I bag a second run FD. This is my most stable run of FD, and it's strictly for my shots that I need to finish hyzer on a backhand line. I also love to use this for my dead flat and straight forehand shots up to like 330. As much as I love the Night Strike, I have to say the FD3 is probably still my favorite Discmania mold. I'm bagging two of them right now. Both are in that color glow plastic that we all love. The original glow is my more stable one and the Dismania store color glow one is kind of like that Nate Sexton flip up to flat, ride straight for just a little bit and then fade. Just for example, we're out here at Iron Hill Disc Golf Course in Delaware for the national tour and this is the disc that even if it's not a far shot, if I need to hit a gap, I like the FD3 because of how comfortable it feels in the hand. The color go plastic and the profile of that nine speed disc is why I like to choose it. It's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to match up with the distance. It just feels good in the hand and it gives me the confidence I need to hit those four to 10 foot windows through the trees. All right, the CD2. Really can't say enough great things about the CD2. I have a little bit of a slower arm speed for the right hand backhand, and this nine speed disc does wonders for me. If I need to throw a straight 400 foot shot, this is what I'm reaching for, because I know that I don't need to force it over at all to cover ground. These are S-Line CD2. They're a little bit flippier, and I know if I started off on just a little bit of hyzer, that it's gonna flip up to flat, drift a little bit, and then finish pretty neutral. If I throw these on a forehand line, they like to break pretty quick and finish left. I really hope that the CD2 makes a strong comeback with this Mania's new in-house production. All right. Another one of my favorite new molds from Dismania is the Essence. It's an eight speed understable fairway driver a little bit flippier than my Night Strike, but it's a little bit faster as well. So I'll use it for like a quick roller if I need to. I'll also use it for my longer panning Anheusers. The Meta Essence is being produced right now at Lats Factory, and it's actually gonna be my signature disc for 2021. Gonna be called the Zen. So be on the lookout. All right, next up, Alone Hal 2. Love this S-Line PD. Colton Montgomery, good friend of mine. The Lone Howl 2 is a little bit straighter than the original Lone Howl, and I love it for my 375 to 425 straight backhand shots that has considerable fade at the end. No Dismania bag would be complete without a tilt. This is my total trick shot disc right here. You can throw this thing vertical, and instead of drifting to the left like any other disc, it's so stable that if you throw it vertical, it just wants to go straight up and come straight back down and the same with the forehand line. If I release this on a strong ante, it's so stable that it wants to scoop out and come right back to the ground. It's incredible what they've done with the tilt and I highly recommend that everyone try it tilt for getting out of jail. Getting into the drivers now, this is the first cloud breaker that I ever had in my bag. It's my most understable one and probably my longest flying disc. Next up is a fresh prototype cloud breaker. This is my go-to forehand disc. 
and probably my most used driver right now. All right, I've got a couple PD2s in the bag as well. This is the first Dismania disc that I ever owned, the PD2, and probably the most consistent mold over the last six years for me. I like the Glow PD2, it's got a little bit more flip up than a fresh one. And this is actually a, a, a first run European Open PD2. It's the most stable driver in my bag and the one that I'll rely on for forehands into headwinds. This is a Cloudbreaker 2, juicy, kind of flat, really consistent. This is what I'm pulling out for stable to straight forehand lines and backhand lines. This is a fresh prototype DD3. I don't know how Eagle and Simon make the distance look so effortless with these things. For me, it's kind of on the stable spectrum, but the grip on this new C-Line from Dismania is incredible. I can't wait for you guys to feel these. Prototype DD3. All right, I've been loving the Enigma. It's a 12 speed. And for me, it's a little bit more understable. And so I can get a little bit easier distance out of this thing. I actually prefer a little lighter weight here. I don't have to throw it as hard to get that 450 to 475 feet of distance that I need to stay competing out here on tour. Great job with the Enigma and Dismania. All right, so one tip that I wanna share with you guys is about separating the intuitive mindset from the analytical mindset. So the analytical mindset is the one that we're in when we're trying to actually change our form and improve the way we throw in the field or on the putting green. But the intuitive mindset is the one that you wanna be in when you're competing. You don't wanna be thinking about how to throw when you're on the course during the tournament. You just wanna be looking down your line and looking at the target. It's a simple tip, but one that helped me out quite a bit. Thanks for listening to my In The Bag. Again, thank you to Dismania Dis for their belief in me as a player and an ambassador for their brand. Be on the lookout for the Meta Essence, AKA the Nate Perkins Zen later this fall. And I'll see you guys on the road.